Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Banjo Kazooie. I like how I waste an invincibility feather thing right there at the beginning of the episode. But anyway, this is episode 8 of Let's Play Banjo Kazooie, and in this episode, you might be wondering why I'm not starting off in the same place that I ended episode 7. And that is because I completely forgot that you could get some of those stop and swap eggs here without actually having to put in the codes, you know in the sandcastle in Treasure Trove Cove, but here was the uh, the green one up here. I can't believe that I didn't see that up there when I came in there to get the... when I was the pumpkin, you know? So I can't believe I didn't get that. There's one more over here that's a little more hidden. The thing is, like, I just wasn't even looking for them because they're not supposed to be there unless you put in those codes, but apparently on the uh, Xbox version they are there, so... If you guys remember this room, there was one open already. And if we come in here, we get the blue one. Or actually, I guess that one's technically called, like, I don't think that's blue. I think it's like cyan or something like that, but whatever. Regardless, this level, I think, is the only level in the game to have two mystery eggs. So you would think they would be able to distribute their mystery eggs a little bit better than that. But well, before we go to the next level, I actually do kind of want to get the one that I missed in Treasure Trove Cove. So I will see you guys in Treasure Trove Cove. See you guys in a second. And here we are in Treasure Trove Cove. I hope that transition is nice enough for you guys. But the basically, guys, I had to wake up very early today. It's like 6 o'clock right now. So if you guys can tell or hear a little bit of tiredness in my voice, I don't know if that's even possible. But regardless, I had to wake up so early to get this out. I was actually just going to make like a five-minute episode where I got all these mystery eggs and didn't cut out the travel between, uh, what is it? Wherever I just was at, Mad Monster Mansion in this area, but I thought that was kind of cheap. So I bucked up, and I'm going to go ahead and do Rusty Bucket Bay, even though that is the hardest level in the game, in my opinion anyway, because I'll explain it a little more in detail when I get there, but basically the water there, if you guys remember Clanker's Cavern, there was a lot of water there that we had to swim in, and there's even more water in Rusty Bucket Bay, but the trick is, if you're submerged in the water in Rusty Bucket Bay, you actually take, or you lose twice as much air. You lose air twice as fast, how about I just say it that way. And if you're on the surface of the water, even if your head is above water or whatever, you'll still lose health, or not health, but air. So that's why Rusty Bucket Bay is kind of hard, and it wouldn't be that bad if everything didn't seem to be underwater, but I guess once I get over there, I'll just go ahead and cut it out. I've actually also got to get the that Jiggy in the eye, if you guys remember that, outside of Freeze Easy Peak there. And there's also a Brentilda, you know, iteration up there. So I gotta do those things, and then we'll do Rusty Bucket Bay. So I wanna not make this episode really, really long, because Rusty Bucket Bay could take forever. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out again. But I will see you guys in a second. Alright, now here we are. Supposedly there's a way to jump, like, get up from the hat and jump in there into the eye. I think you like jump from the hat of Grunty to the nose and then to the eye or something like that, but I'm not going to try all that. Basically, I just want to talk to Brentilda and I want to get that jiggy so we can move on because Rusty Bucket Bay, like I keep saying, is probably the hardest level and I don't know. I, it's kind of fun though. It's probably one of my favorite levels actually. A lot of people just don't even like the level, but I don't know. I kind of like it. So hopefully we make it to the flying pad in time. If not, that's going to kind of I like how they just barely give you enough time on the running shoes to get there. Come on, come on, come on! Yes! As soon as that timer hits zero, it will disappear. So hopefully, if I can get this thing... Oh, I would kind of want to try and get the, the Jiggy and still fly so I can get up to the top of the hat as well. So let's see if that's possible here. Oh, yes I did! Come on, fly out of there, come on! There we go. I didn't expect that to work. Now, if I could get out from under the bill of this hat or the brim or whatever, there we go. Now, there's Brentilda that we need to talk to, so let's learn more about our favorite character in the series here. She has spider pancakes for breakfast. Oh, I thought Brentilda was uh, replying to Brentilda here, but apparently she's just talking about uh, Tootie. Alright, she usually has slug stew for dinner. Alright, so spider pancakes, slug stew. And Wart Bags finishes with Eyeball Ice Cream for dessert. Overall, it was pretty disgusting, but nothing as bad as, what was that, like, the Wart, which is Wartly Magazine? I don't remember what that was called, but alright, so now that I've done that, over here, there is actually another 
pot. So let me go ahead and take this thing out here. Talk to the pot. I'm not going to go in it right now just because we don't really need to. And I don't think we've even unlocked the other blue one. If we have, I don't know, just slipped my mind. But to get to the next level, if you guys remember in the last episode, I, what did I do? I was in Mad Monster Mansion and I was a pumpkin. And I had to go out and open up that, or just go into the crypt so I could turn back into Banjo, open up that coffin, and hit that water switch, which said one or two on it or something like that. And what that did was raise the water level in this area right here. I see a mumbo to token down here I'm going to go get. But that raised the water level in this area right where I'm in right now. And without doing that, you can't even get into the next level. So I think it's kind of funny how they kind of block the, this level kind of almost. Like, I'm trying to think of how to explain this. If you don't know to break out the gate and then to use the pumpkin transformation to go out there and to do all that stuff to raise the water level in here, you will never get to go into Rusty Bucket Bay. So I find it kind of weird that they would kind of hide a main level like that. But, you know, I guess it's kind of cool. I'm surprised anybody even found this level as a kid, to be honest. It looks like there's another pot over here. I didn't even notice one was over here. What color? Okay, is that blue? I could have... Yeah. So, apparently, I just opened up, opened up both of those at the same time. Before we can go in there, though, we have to do the classic painting or picture or whatever. Put the jigsaw puzzles in there. And to do so, you got to come all the way over here. So, basically, it's not hard to get to the level. It's really just hard to get to the painting to open the level. And to do so, you got to break out this gate here. And there's a little hidden room in here. So let's go ahead and throw our jiggies in here. It looks like it's going to take, what, did that 12? I, I didn't quite see what number I had before I put the jiggies in there, but I think it was 12. But there's Rusty Bucket Bay. I always kind of get that confused with, there's a level in Mario. I think it's Jolly Rogers Bay or something like that. So yeah, down there, there's nothing except for a grate that just kind of looks onto the room with, um... What room is that? The room with the Mad Monster Mansion painting? So I'm not sure why that little walkway is there, other than maybe just to get you confused, or maybe if you hadn't seen... No, that's impossible. I was gonna say, maybe if you hadn't seen Mad Monster Mansion yet, if you had gone through there, you'd be able to tell that there was a level that you need to be looking for, but if you had... To get up there, you would have had to have gone to Mad Monster Mansion in the first place. But, as is customary in the Let's Play, I want you guys to hear the music. I guess that's enough. Not as good as Mad Monster Mansion, I don't personally think, but, you know, not too bad. Oh, and I get annihilated. There are some weird enemies here that will probably make your life not so fun. And these guys are not... Well, we've seen these guys before. Oh, are you kidding? That's... Ch if they had hit me into a combo right there where I had, you know... That guy had chomped me down there, and then the uh, the explosive guy got me. That would have been embarrassing. I kind of find it sometimes it's kind it's a little bit hard to maybe hit those guys like it would be in other levels just because of the the camera angle. So be careful with that. Overall, this level is not that hard. There's only two areas that I can think of that like, basically why people don't like this level, and one is basically the whole underwater and if you guys can just look around here look at the water look how basically it's supposed to be oily and that is why it does the uh the extra air damage if you guys remember what i was talking about earlier so there there's that and then there's one room called the machine room or something like that where basically you're suspended above a whole like chasm and there's spinning gears you got to jump across and fans that are waiting to knock you off and in, in the original Nintendo 64 version if you fell off or if you died all of the notes would be put back to where they were when the level started like as if you had never collected them luckily in the Xbox version it's not like that I think I've explained this once before but it will keep the notes collected for you anyway here you there's kind of like a little puzzle thing you just got to put in three one two one 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 and there's somewhere in the level where it tells you this, but you might as well, if you already know the code, just put it in. And we're going to get our first Jiggy right out of the gate, so that's pretty cool. This level, by the way, the ship here is called the Jolly Roger. Or the, the Rusty Bucket, not the Jolly Roger, what is this, a pirate ship? It's called the Rusty Bucket, and somewhere there's like a nameplate where it says the Rusty Bucket on it. I can't find it exactly, or I don't know where it is. I think it might be over here. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time. There it is. Or maybe that's... Somewhere, basically, there's a sign that says Rusty Bucket on it. 
and it says some wherever the rare where headquarters is it says that name on it so it's pretty cool kind of like a real world shout out i guess where they put the name of their the city where their headquarters is in the game and another thing that i like about the xbox version is it seems like the camera angle is a whole lot better i know i've complained about it a little bit but in the original nintendo 64 version it was like completely locked at some places and you couldn't move it at all for instance when i was on that little platform where the rails getting those notes a second ago i probably should have pointed out when i was there but it was just hard to turn the angle the camera to get that angle to get those notes without falling off so i like how the, they did improve a little bit you know i don't know if they actually did anything to the camera angle or if i'm just it's like a placebo effect or something but anyway yeah if you guys can see that i'm on top of the water right now well apparently i'm under the water right now but a second ago, I was under the water, on top of the water, and I was still losing health, or air. By the way, my mom's like yelling through the door, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but this Jiggy in here is kind of, I always thought it was weird as a kid. Basically, you'll, get, you'll see what I got, you'll see, you guys will see what I mean in a second. But if you guys saw that dolphin, it was trapped, or maybe it was, I guess it was a dolphin, it was trapped under the water, or trapped under a an anchor. And if we hit the switch right here, it will drag the anchor across the dolphin. I was like, no, as a kid. Like, it I thought it was going to get hurt or something like that. Because if you drag it... Okay, first of all, it's a rusty anchor. It was trapped on the dolphin. It looked like it was being dragged across the tail or whatever. So, I don't know. Luckily, the dolphin's safe. But that's all there is to this area. What I... As much as I do kind of like this level, it seems like the jiggies are kind of haphazardly placed. This one in particular is not too bad, but there's one coming up where it's just like they put it in a random area, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Come on, turn, there we go. All right, so now where do I want to go from here? The thing I do kind of like about this level, I guess, I'm getting kind of low on air. Oh, I'm gonna drown, I'm gonna drown, I'm gonna drown. Hopefully I can like get in here or something and this is gonna be embarrassing. I still told you guys I would not drown. Get over to the box, oh no! Come on! See what I mean? This is why people hated this level as a kid. Oh, man. Alright, whatever. That's just one of the things you gotta worry about when you're playing Rusty Bucket Bay, and I completely forgot about it. While I'm over here, might as well explain these things. They say toll and then a number on them, and there's a couple of them in the level. And what that does... Basically, you have to shoot eggs into them, and they will make these things appear. Hopefully I can get the trick to work where you don't need to use those way on the other side of the level, but if so, not a big deal. Alright, so let's go ahead and collect this. I don't think I had collected any Jinjos yet, so that's pretty good. And another thing, it looks like Chomper, whatever his name is back, the shark is back from Treasure Trove Cove. Uh, it, maybe it's just a different shark, I don't know. Alright, so let's get down here. There's a crack in the thing that you can barely see that you're supposed to go into. And in here, it looks like the water's a little bit cleaner, but it looks like you're still gonna lose health if you do that. Now, this area is not too secret. See, like, that is kind of a- I am normally a pretty easy go- that's annoying, alright? I hit this guy, there we go. Let me get your health there. Now, there's a hidden honeycomb in here. I don't know why they bothered to put a switch on it like they did in Gobi's Valley or whatever. I don't know why it wasn't just available. If you knew this place was here, you'd probably look around, see the switch, it would appear. And not only that, but they they put the jiggy, or they put the honeycomb in the same exact area. I think it would have made more, I don't know, questing sense if they had put it somewhere else, or maybe if there was just no switch in the first place. But anyway, let's go ahead and collect that. That is the only thing in this area here too, so if you don't know that there's a crack down there, you're probably not gonna find this area. But let's go down here. Now, there's a place coming up where there is... I guess you could call it... Radioactive, almost? It kind of reminds me of, like, The Simpsons... Never mind, I'm not even gonna go that route. But anyway, if we come up over here on this ladder, you'll see what I mean. And it's kind of like this water down here. There we go. It, it's kind of like the water out there, but if you land in it, your health... There we go, might as well explain. If you land in it, your health is actually taken away, and it counts as water, so your air is also taken away. That is not a good combination at all, because if you're in there for too long, you're probably gonna die. Alright. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I just, I'd like to take explosions on the chin, alright? That's how I like to take care of my TNT boxes, anyway. Now, this is kind of a cool jiggy. 
if you come up here, I don't know, I like this Jiggy. If you put in this little switch, I guess, it'll raise up that cage there. And you have like, yeah, 15, 16 seconds to get over there. There's actually kind of a cool way where you can go from the bottom of this crane and jump over to the ship. I've never been able to get that to work, so I wouldn't recommend it unless you're just really daring. Uh, hopefully I get there in time. There we go. That was close. If you don't get out of here in time, I think if you just sit here- Oh, run, Banjo, come on! I thought the cage was gonna fall, but I guess not. Okay, never mind, I guess it will fall. Maybe, I don't- I don't guess you can get stuck there, because I think if you could get stuck there, it would have fallen before, like, I think what happens is you get a certain distance away from it, and then it will fall down. Okay, yeah. This area, by the way, it looks like a kitchen, and that's because it is a kitchen. If you land on the hot, yeah, red hot ovens, like Gr Grunty is saying to us, you will get hurt. Now, hopefully, I was gonna say, hopefully that's not like a hot grease stain on the floor, like if I step on it, I'll get hurt. I like how they hid a mumbo token inside one of the, the ovens, and if we go in there to get that thing, it's gonna burn us, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. Well, at least I got it. Sometimes I'll, like, get stuck in there. I, I, why do I keep wasting those? But sometimes we, I will accidentally, like, you know, get stuck in there and then flop around and I'll just keep taking damage over and over, so don't recommend trying that. Alright, we got another window we can break out here. Let's go ahead. Is this the bunk room? No, it's not. But if you hear that music, you guys will hear that it is the same music that played when we were in the Rusty, not Rusty Bucket Bay, when we were in Mad Monster Mansion, and that was the red stop and swap egg, so... There's only one in this area. I figured that it would make more sense if they put... If they were gonna put multiple eggs in one level, I would think that they would want to do it maybe later in the game, not right smack dab in the middle of the game. But... You guys are getting a little glimpse into my life here. Apparently everyone's getting ready and they have to talk really loud. But here's another window. But yeah, I don't know why they would decide to put two mystery eggs. I think I mentioned this before, but I'm not sure why they would decide to put two mystery eggs in one level. Because there are plenty of levels, and it would have made more sense, I think, to, you know, separate them out a little bit. I've heard tell that there is a painting in here. Maybe it's not in here. It's in some level, or some area in this level, where you can see a picture of Conquer. So, not sure if that's true or not. I've heard that it was actually Barry in the first game, but they, when they ported it over to the Xbox, for some reason they had to change it to... To conquer. I don't know why that would make. I mean, Barry is sort of part of the conquer. You know, IP, isn't she? I don't know. Because I, I know that Rare bought or was bought up by Microsoft or whatever, but I'm not sure why they would have to change the Barry picture to conquer, if you guys know what I'm trying to say. Maybe they just didn't figure that people would know who Barry was. Maybe Conquer's a little bit more recognizable, so they did that. There we go. But if it's going to be an Easter egg, you might as well make it something that people aren't necessarily going to recognize. And I think there's a place in this game, or it might be in Banjo-Tooie, or it might not even be in a Banjo game. It might be some other rare game. But I think there's a picture of a Jet Force... I, no, that's in uh, banjo Two. I remember now. It's in Bottle's house. Yes, we get to go there. It's a picture of uh, the Jet Force Gemini people. So, we get to look forward to that. Now, this area, I think there's a blue Jinjo in here, but I don't quite remember where it is. Let's go ahead and take this guy out. There we go. There, I hear him whistling. Where are you, buddy? There you are. Alright, so where's the orange Jinjo? Did I get that one? I can't remember. I know where the purple one is at. I'm just, man, I'm trying to remember where that orange one is. Oh, well. I'm sure it, if you go about the level and kind of like around in a roundabout way, you'll pretty much- Oh, I remember to say there. You literally just- I was gonna say, if you go around the level in a roundabout way, you'll find it definitely. Hopefully this trick right here works. Yes! Alright. That is not supposed to work. Oh, I can't believe it did work. Obviously it's supposed to work because it did work. But I thought for sure that that wouldn't work in the Xbox version. What happened, if you didn't see, was I got up high enough on the green thing, and then did a, a backflip thing up here, so... You don't have to worry about... Basic, the way you're supposed to get over here is you're supposed to actually climb on that TNT box that just fell, and then you're supposed to jump across that crane above me over here, but I decided not to do that. Before I continue there, uh, there's the orange ginger that I was fretting about not remembering where it was at. Let's go ahead and try the trick again. Hopefully it'll work. There we go. I love the tricks that you can do in these old games like that, or even Mario 64, or... 
I don't know, pretty much any game where you can do speedrunning techniques that will actually help you. Like, other speedrunning techniques are probably not really that useful to people who aren't doing a speed run but that technique right there will save you from having like if you don't know where to go perhaps or something like that i don't know all right so let's go ahead we need to get back over to the ship i think we've pretty much taken care of everything over here the inside of the ship is where you're really going to have the most trouble i think because there's a weird box enemy in there that we're just about getting ready to fight and we also have the engine room to worry about that grunty switch over there has caused me so much trouble as a kid. Let's see if I can go ahead and get it. Oh my goodness. That was close. Well, I guess I'm over here. Might as well go ahead and get this mumbo token. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out until I get back up there and try it again. Because I need to do that, and I want to do that before I go in that hole. So I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, here I am again up on top of the crane. Let's get down there. Maybe if I just kind of get closer to the end of the crane and jump. But that gives you a little bit less running room to get like a running jump so maybe there's like a a perfect medium here that you need to get to to yes oh man that was close all right so there we go you might not think that we've been to that area because it doesn't really look that familiar but we actually have the difference is that we haven't been there with the water all the way up yet so that might be why it looks a little bit different all right so before we go let's go okay before i go that way by the way there are some of these oh man he got me I was just about to say, there are some of those things that will actually bite you, and I'm not- Yeah, we've gone down a couple of them, so you might think, you know, that since you've gone in a couple of them, they're all going to be safe, but no, some of them actually bite you. Now, right there is a rareware flag, so that's kind of like, I don't know, a reference, I guess, to the first game. I'm not sure exactly- or the original game on the Nintendo 64. I'm not sure when Rareware became rare, or even if their logo changed or anything like that, but I don't know. That switch right there will actually make those things slow down. If you don't do that, you're pretty much going to be screwed, because, as you can see, those fans were going extremely fast. And those aren't. that's not even the only switch. You guys will see what I mean in a second. But now that we've done that... Oh, I didn't even go in the hole yet, I don't think. Let's go in here. There's kind of, like I said, a cool enemy in here. Let me go ahead and shoot some eggs and get them nice and ready. Actually, apparently that trick doesn't work on the Xbox version. What people do... Get away from me! I That was about to be really cheap right there. I'm like waiting in bated breath for this guy to break. Basically what happens is you beat him, or you hit him, and he'll break into a bunch of pieces. I think there's 15 pieces you gotta break in all, or something like that, but every time you break them, he turns into more pieces. So, come here, there we go. What people do, like on the, the Xbox, or the Nintendo 64 version, is shoot some eggs and it'll get them nice and worked up, and then you can just run in with a, an invincibility egg and it'll be fine. Oh, that was close, he got like right next to me, but this guy's getting pretty close too. I don't have any doubts that I'm about to die, so if I die, uh, well, I guess I'm just gonna die. Why couldn't there have been just a little bit of health in here, please? Just like one. I like how they did line the room with these eggs, though, because that obviously gives you a little more range that you don't have to worry about getting right next to- Oh, get away from me, get away from me, get away from- Oh, no, no. Alright, so let's turn around- No, that's not good either. Alright. Normally, I would just get in there and peck them to death, but it seems that whenever I get close to anything in this game, I just die. So, I'm going to try and keep my distance. You know what? Forget it. See, what is that? What is that? That is why I don't do stuff like that, because apparently, the pecking attack does not work if you want it to work. Oh, my goodness. Alright, this level has just turned into complete fail. Alright, so I still gotta drop the TNT box and everything. This is just great. Alright, whatever. How many Jiggies do we even have? I think I've gotta collect, go collect the, uh... This is just completely ridiculous. Alright, you know what I'm gonna do? For the first time in this Let's Play, I'm just going to go ahead and get one more Jiggy, I think. And then I will end the episode, because I've gotta go somewhere. I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm kind of in a hurry. That's why I'm cutting out parts and all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, I've actually gotta go somewhere. But I can't leave you guys on an empty note like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and get one more note. One more Jiggy. Also, couldn't let you guys go in an episode without me mixing up the specifics of notes and Jiggies. I wasn't expecting that boss to be that hard, actually. I don't remember it being that much of a problem back in the day. But yeah, for the first time in this Let's Play, I'm actually gonna have to head out before 
a level is complete, but it doesn't matter. It looks like this episode is going to be as long as any other episode. All right, so let's get in here. You know what? I don't want to take any more of your crap, kid. This boss in particular is just really annoying. If you guys remember the ice enemies back in, uh, what was that? Freeze Easy Peak? It's kind of like that if you think about it. See, that is annoying. I'm not really one to get annoyed all that much or, you know, I'm pretty chill. But why is that hurting me? I mean, I'm pecking and that's the point of the attack, right? To get close and take care of them. There we go. Oh no. You know what? There we go. All right. I do, you know, it probably would have been a better idea if I had stocked up on the invincibility feathers because you saw, guys saw that the invincibility feathers actually did take them out pretty easily. So if you've got any of those stored up, I wouldn't hesitate to use those in this area because this boss is very, very annoying. Oh my goodness, if I die now, that will just completely... Alright, one more. There we go, oh my goodness. I thought for sure that I was done again. Oh boy. Alright, I guess I have to go ahead and end the episode here. I do want to, or I did want to get an episode out today. That's why I'm not completing. That's why I even started the episode in the first place. Because I don't want to have to go a day without a video, obviously. Because I don't want to leave you guys hanging. But I also have to go somewhere. Hopefully you guys didn't hear my mom yelling out there and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I guess I want to thank you guys for watching this semi-fail episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. And I'll see you guys back for the next episode.